when my colleagues Kevin Merrigan, Grant Henderson and Kristen Klein announced that they had a Heeson for sale called Sea Axis, I immediately took the opportunity to produce a vlog all about Heeson and the amazing yachts that they have currently in construction. Little did I know what that vlog would lead to though, as many of the viewers had questions about why Heeson builds some yachts with steel hulls, others with aluminium hulls, and one viewer in particular called Fisher H, who asked the question as to how you join an aluminium superstructure to a steel hull, since those are two metals that you can't actually weld together. Well, that vlog actually came to the attention of Heeson themselves, and as you can imagine, I was delighted when they offered to record some videos in which they themselves answer your questions and also giving me more information about two of the yachts that they have currently in construction, namely the steel hulled 50 meter Aura and the aluminium hulled 50 meter Sapphire. Before I tell you a little bit about those yachts though, let me introduce you to Carlos. Carlos is actually one of their top welders and they asked him to answer Fisher H's question about how do you join aluminium to steel? My name is Carlos Froelich. I will happy to answer the question of Mr. Fisher. He's asking, how do we combine the steel hull against the aluminium superstructure? It's true that we cannot weld aluminium and steel together because these two materials have different compositions. That's why we use a product called Triclad. This product is made out of two materials. In this case, aluminium and steel. These two materials are combined through a chemical reaction caused by an explosion. Out of this reaction, you will get a stable and strong product. After laser cutting the form of the superstructure, we weld first the triclet on the hull, on the steel side, and after it's welded, we then lower the superstructure on the aluminium side, and then we weld it on the aluminium part and that's how we join the hull and the superstructure. Thank you so much, Carlos. And here is an example of a steel and aluminium yacht that Heeson is building right now with the assistance of Carlos and the triclad product that is molecularly fused material with steel on one side and aluminium on the other. Here you can see the 50 meter project aura having the aluminium superstructure fitted to the steel hull, no doubt with Carlos and his team ready to get started welding the two together. Now Heeson described this as a true blue water yacht, meaning that she's very capable of long range cruising, even in high seas if necessary. In fact, her steel hull has a bulbous bow. Her engines, which are MTU 4000 series, produce a top speed of 15 knots. That tells me that range is more important than speed with this yacht. And in fact, she has a range of 3,800 nautical miles. So yes, you could cross the Atlantic with this yacht. The wheelhouse too has an almost military look to it due to the reverse incline on the bridge windows. Again, something that's very practical for ocean going ships and gives Aura quite an aggressive business-like appearance. The designer actually is a British designer called Clifford Dean, and he wanted to keep the sporty DNA of Heeson yachts, but at the same time, give it some practical features. One example of this is the horizontal strakes on the side fashion plates. This part of the superstructure is often just a solid piece of metal, but by adding those strakes, it gives the yacht a more sporty look but it also allows guests on the after deck a better view of the surroundings. Heeson also sent me some images of the intended interior for the yacht, designed again by a British studio called Raymond Langton. They describe the design as Scandinavian chic. Personally, I love it. But if it's not your cup of tea, I can't stress enough that Heeson, together with Raymond Langton, are of course very happy to create an interior vibe that suits your taste. Back to that steel aluminium conversation though, and it's time to introduce you to Mark Cavendish. Now, Mark is the executive commercial officer of Heeson Yachts, and we'll also be hearing from Friso Visser, 
who is the chief commercial officer. And they'll be explaining a little bit of the reasoning behind why some of their yachts are built with steel hulls. Yes, of course, when Heeson was founded back in the mid-70s by uh, Franz Heeson, the, uh, the path of the shipyard was very much building lightweight aluminium, high luxury, fast yachts. And that remained the case for many, many years until, let me think, it was in the late 80s when the first steel yacht was built. And if I remember rightly, she was called Achiever. Um, and that was when we entered the more traditional steel displacement uh, market. Well, structural maintenance in a steel yacht is very important. If uh, one does not do that, uh, automatically uh, corrosion will, will come to, to, to the surface. And if you don't maintain that, the resale value and the looks of your boat will, uh, will uh, be reduced significantly. Steel is a lot easier to work with than aluminium. Steel is a technology uh, that is being used all over the world. And for aluminium, you need uh, specific knowledge, specific tools. So I would say yes. However, uh, as it, has, uh, le it needs less maintenance, you also need less technology to do it. Okay, now that, that's, there are probably two parts to this question. Steel, of course, is a, uh, is a less expensive material and uh, you need um, lower skilled laborers, as I mentioned in the previous question. There are more people who can uh, weld in steel than can weld in the more complicated aluminium. So you have two factors at play here. One is that the, the material itself is more expensive and the cost of working in aluminium, so the, um, the, the, the rates for welding in aluminium are higher. But the biggest um, factor in all of this is actually nothing to do with the aluminium or the steel. And as I went, as I referred to right at the beginning of this, um, aluminium is used for higher speed yachts. Higher speed yachts have big engines and it's actually the, uh, the bigger, more powerful engines that have the biggest impact on the cost of an aluminium boat versus a steel boat. If you pushed me into a corner to try and compare one with the other, I would hazard a guess that an aluminium hull is probably about 15% more expensive than a steel hull. But of course, the hull is only one part of the whole structure of building a boat. And, you know, you add to that the engines and all the interior and all the rest of it. At the end of the day, I think the difference between an aluminium and a steel hull is probably no more than somewhere around uh, one to two percent of the total cost of the boat. But I'm afraid it's the engines will be the biggest impact on uh, driving costs. Well, that's a pretty thorough explanation of why some Heeson yachts have steel hulls. So here's one that's in the process of being entirely built from aluminium at Heeson right now. 50 meter Project Sapphire has a few interesting features that demonstrate the benefits of aluminium construction, starting with the draft, which is just 2.15 meters. Of course, you choose your yacht according to the way that you want to use it. And if you are planning to spend a lot of time in the Bahamas, where the water is really quite shallow, it's very useful indeed to have a shallow draft. The top speed of 23 knots too would probably not be achievable with a steel hull, although she does have a slightly smaller range of 3,100 nautical miles. Still a pretty good range though, just not quite as much as Aura that's described as a blue water yacht. The exterior design was carried out by Frank Laupman, and he had a pretty big challenge since this 50 meter sub 500 gross ton all aluminium yacht is at the heart of Heeson's DNA. And he needed to produce something that retained Heeson's heritage, but still looked fresh and modern. One exterior design feature that's quite distinctive is this downward facing bow that accentuates the sleek profile of the yacht, but at the same time gives a better line of sight from the bridge to the water. Again, Heeson sent me some renderings of the planned interior design for the yacht, this time by Italian designer Cristiano Gatto, who describes his concept as 18th century modern. 
They say that they have chosen unpretentious materials and use artisanal techniques over glossy finishes to offer a view into the past. But now it's time to take a view on why it is that Heeson choose to build some of their yachts entirely from aluminium. And once again, it's the Executive Commercial Officer Mark Cavendish and the Chief Commercial Officer Chris Odissa who very kindly volunteered to give viewers of this channel this insight. If you look at, uh, at the, yachts best, the yachts best suited for uh, aluminium construction, one would think of um, uh, yachts that have to go fast, and uh, yeah, well, aluminium suits best for that. That's an interesting question, and um, I may well be shot down in flames by our technical department on this one, but I think there are, and um, it's probably going to be up uh, around the 80 meter length that uh, we're currently building um, Project Cosmos to. Um, but I'd need to really come back to you on that because it may be possible uh, to build slightly bigger boats um, uh, using different technology. But essentially, I think something up to 80, maybe 100 meters is about the maximum you'd want to build an aluminium boat out of. Yes, this is correct. Uh, aluminium is a softer and uh, lighter material than steel. Uh, having said that, if I start with the uh, specification, because both steel boats and aluminium boats both have to be built to the same exacting standards required by the Classification Society and the Flag Authority. So essentially, at the end of the day, both steel and aluminium yachts are finished to exactly the same standards of strength, um, stability, and all the rest of it. The way you do that with an aluminium boat is through the construction. Um, a yacht is essentially, or a ship is essentially, built out of a series of frames and longitudinals. And with an aluminium boat, you simply have uh, bigger and closer frames and uh, closer longitudinal structures. So you have more of a matrix framework um, behind the skin in the hull of the boat than you do on a steel boat. Not anymore. It's an interesting question, that, because years ago that was a very big problem, particularly um, electrolysis was a problem. But today, with modern technology, uh, electrolysis is, 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 is largely taken care of. And uh, to be honest, no, that is no longer a consideration in, uh, in aluminium. This is something that has been solved in the last 30 years, probably, so uh, it, it's, it's fine now. Um, that's an interesting question and um, it may be worth doing some more uh, market research to see what the residual value is of the two different boats. To be honest, I would highly doubt it. Um, aluminium boats are conceivably could even actually be a, be a little bit of a better investment in that regard because it is a much more specialised uh, material to build in. It's for more specialised type of craft. As I started by saying at the beginning, it's more for high speed craft and high speed craft are inherently more expensive than um, traditional steel yachts, principally because the engines are much bigger uh, in order to get the speed. But also aluminium is a slightly more expensive material to build out of. So you, you will start off with a higher cost with an aluminium boat. So as I surmise, probably an aluminium yacht would have a higher residual value than a steel boat because of its specialist nature. I think you'll agree with me that Heeson have gone above and beyond in ensuring that all of your questions and honestly some of my questions too have been thoroughly answered. I'm hugely grateful to them for taking the time making the effort to record those videos. Actually I'll put a link to their YouTube channel in the description below because I thought It'd be a nice way of thanking them if I and as many of us as possible subscribe to their channel. And I have to say, they have some fantastic content on their YouTube channel too. I'm really trying to turn this YouTube channel into a channel that opens up a window onto the world of yacht brokerage. And actually showing you the research I do about yacht builders and the various techniques that they have in constructing yachts is a big part of that. The content at the moment is quite 
piece and heavy because the next blog I publish will be all about the efforts that my colleagues are making in the United States to find a buyer for a Heeson yacht called Sea Axis. I'd love to tell you all about that video, but I won't because then you might not watch it. And I do want you to watch that video when it comes out next week. So if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, now's the time to do so and click that little bell icon so that you get notifications of new content when it's released.